Hi there, it's Asia. Welcome to my channel. And the question is, what do IELTS examiners look for to award band 8? When it comes to your grammar, you have to use different types of sentences and other complex grammatical structures. According to IELTS band descriptors, you have to use a mix of simple and complex sentence forms in order to get band 6, a variety of complex structures to get band 7, and a wide range of structures to get band 8 or 9. For this video, I've prepared six types of English sentences that will help you to get that band 8 score. But don't forget, in order to get a high score for your grammar, your writing has to be complex, but it also has to be accurate. So please pay attention to those commas and other grammar rules you may well loathe. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the complex sentences. That's where you use words like when, where, until, although, and so on. Many countries encourage tourism because it brings economic growth. In this sentence, we have an independent clause. Many countries encourage tourism and a dependent clause because it brings economic growth. We could put the dependent clause at the beginning of the sentence. Because tourism brings economic growth, many countries encourage it. When the sentence begins with words like because, although, when, until, it means the dependent clause goes first. And we have to put a comma at the end of this dependent clause in the middle of the sentence. But if the dependent clause is at the end of the sentence, like in the first example, we don't need a comma. Another type of complex sentences is called conditional clauses or if clauses. It means there is a condition in the sentence and the action in the main clause will only happen if the condition is met. It's easier if you see an example. If carbon dioxide emissions are not curbed, comma, the climate of the planet will change significantly. Please note, I used the present simple in the if clause and the future simple in the main clause. There are several types of these conditional sentences. Uh, here is another one. If diesel cars had not been subsidized in the UK, the air pollution problem would not have reached the present levels. I showed how to use different types of conditionals in my video called IELTS Grammar Fix Top 5 Mistakes and I'm going to link it here. The next type of sentence, which is great to use in IELTS writing, is the relative clause. That's where you use pronouns who, which, that. And it helps to add extra information about a person, place or thing. Relative clauses help to make your writing more fluent and coherent. Let's take an example we used earlier and add a relative clause to it. Many countries which suffer from the loss of traditional industries, encourage tourism because it brings economic growth. Please note, if the meaning of the sentence is clear without the relative clause, you have to put a comma before and after, like in this example. But if you can't really remove the relative clause because the meaning of the sentence will be lost, then you don't need commas. And I have a separate video about how to use it correctly, which is going to be linked just here. We talked about the complex sentences. Another way to vary your sentence structures is to use compound sentences. That's when you have two simple sentences and you link them together with conjunctions such as and, but, or, yet. For example, here are two simple sentences. Many young people cannot afford to pay university fees. The government should take steps to alleviate this problem. We could say, many young people cannot afford to pay university fees, 
So the government should take steps to alleviate this problem. So it's a compound sentence. We could also say many young people can't afford to pay university fees, but the government hasn't taken any steps to alleviate this problem. Please note, if you have a compound sentence with linkers such as and, but, or, yet, so, you need to put a comma between the clauses. However, there are some compound sentences where you have to use a semicolon. And if you want to get pen 7 or 8 or 9 for your grammar, you have to know where you put a comma and where you put a semicolon. So let's have a look. Okay, compound sentences with a semicolon. Money is not the root of all evil. I do not believe the reverse is necessarily true. There is no conjunction, no linker. That's why we use a semicolon. Have a look at what happens with this sentence if I add the word however. I use a semicolon before the word however and a comma after. That's because we could split it into two separate sentences and we would still keep the word however, like here. And I can give you a list of linking words to use with the semicolon. Consequently, therefore, however, nevertheless, thus, hence, henceforth, in fact. And here is another example. Money cannot buy happiness, semicolon, nevertheless, comma, a high paying job can bring comfort and financial stability. Now let me show you a fancy way of making a complex sentence from two very simple sentences. That's definitely band 8, 9 grammar. Imagine we have these two very simple sentences. Students pay high tuition fees. Students expect to find a well-paid job upon graduation. What we could say is, after paying high tuition fees, Students expect to find a well-paid job upon graduation. It's called a participle phrase. Basically, it's just a verb with ing. What's important is that both sentences have the same subject, the students, otherwise it wouldn't work. If one action happened before the other, we could use the past form. Our simple sentences are Young people have accumulated a large student debt. Young people struggle to take out a mortgage or start a family. We could say, having accumulated large student debt, young people struggle to take out a mortgage or start a family. So here we need to use having plus the past participle or the third form of the verb such as decided or taken. You can also use linkers such as before, after, since, when, while with a participle phrase. Imagine we have a complex sentence. When the government is considering different options, it should pay attention to their costs. You see, the subject in both clauses is the government. And we could say, when considering different options, the government should pay attention to their costs. Or before making a decision, the government should consider all of the options. All these are great ways to vary your sentence structure. And with the variety of sentences I showed you in this video, you can get band 8 or 9 for your grammar if you use them correctly. So don't forget to learn how to add a relative clause to any sentence to make it complex in this video, and how to use different types of conditional sentences in this video. Thank you for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation. Bye!